To experience the Everglades through the eyes of science is to be awakened. It is a vast wilderness, glorious in its resilience, and yet vulnerable. The trees and grasses, the ancient predators and teardrop islands need clean water. Just the right amount, in the right places, at just the right times. We too benefit from balance in the water. Science reminds us that while the Everglades is an ecosystem we don't completely understand, our lives are deeply connected to it. Here in South Florida, we all live in the greater Everglades. It provides the water we drink, huge bounties of resources, and a destination for visitors around the world. Floridians have shaped and reshaped the Everglades for decades. Now we are trying to reshape it once more to get the water right for us, for the Everglades. Florida International University is one of the major scientific stakeholders in an historic attempt to bring our environment back into balance. Restoration of the Everglades is the largest ecosystem restoration project in history. FIU scientists provide research that is helping to write the blueprint for the future of the Everglades. And more than many places in the world, Miami really relies on these water resources. And that's why FIU's invested heavily in understanding the dynamics of this water, how it's going to change as people's needs change, and as the climate changes around us. Here in the School of Environment and Society, we really look at water from all different angles. From human uses of water and how it affects humans, how humans affect the water quality itself, and then the whole system of ecosystems from the marsh, all the way to the estuaries, out into the oceans from the seagrass beds all the way up to the big predators like sharks and dolphins. The Southeast Environmental Research Center in the School of Environment, Arts, and Society has more than 50 scientists and dozens of graduate students. Their work is supported by more than $10 million every year in grants from the country's top environmental agencies. FIU scientists collaborate closely with those agencies to ensure their research is in the hands of decision makers. And providing that kind of long-term data set and commitment to questions over time, we're able to actually help uh, develop models about how re the restoration program may or may not work and help monitor changes related to the restoration program, as well as other changes that will take place um, related to climate change. FIU is home to more than a dozen environmental laboratories devoted to water-related research. The water nutrient laboratories at FIU are among the most advanced in the southeastern United States. They're able to detect even the most minimal fluctuations in water quality. In the 1990s, it was FIU scientists who set the standard for what remains one of the trickiest problems for the Everglades, how much phosphorus the system can take. FIU Marine Science Director Joel Trexler was part of that research team. He's been working in the Everglades for 20 years. There's really nobody arguing for a concept about phosphorus in the Everglades and its implications that's different than what we came out with. And that's become incorporated in the gut thinking of everybody involved in Everglades restoration. Before the sun rises on many days, FIU scientists and their students are en route to research sites around South Florida. One of them is the Loxahatchee Wildlife Refuge in Boynton Beach, the northernmost remaining area of the Everglades. Within the refuge, the South Florida Water Management District has created a living laboratory called Lila that simulates the basic system of the Everglades. FIU biogeochemist Len Sinto leads graduate students in a number of studies at Loxahatchee. We're looking at these interplay between the uh, hydrology, the biology, and the chemistry and how it can, what can we learn in this semi-controlled environment that may be more difficult to learn out in the Everglades. The Living Laboratory was the vision of Fred Sklar at the South Florida Water Management District. He's one of the state's most respected environmental scientists. Uh, FIU has the largest grant that the district has ever given out for a project of this kind. It is, it is the, the uh, major scientific contributor to this project. FIU scientists have been involved with the project from the beginning. Seven years later, it has proven remarkably successful. The research of FIU and other agencies is yielding new insights into how the Everglades function. And when you're trying to do restoration of a system, you're not trying just to restore one species of birds or one species of, of snake. 
What you're trying to do is understand how all the different pieces interact. FIU is playing a major part by looking at the, the key components of that ecosystem. Hydrologist Renee Price is an expert on water flow and water cycles. She monitors groundwater wells on the tree islands at Loxahatchee. So what we're trying to do is understand the water levels in the groundwater versus the surface water on the tree islands and understand the chemistry that's in the water because that, this is the water that the trees are utilizing and we're trying to understand their growth. The research at Loxahatchee gives scientists an opportunity to test models before making changes in the fragile remains of the Everglades. As most people understand it, the Everglades lies within Everglades National Park. But the park we know today is only one-fifth of the original Everglades. The historic Everglades was a shallow, moving waterway that spilled out from the banks of Lake Okeechobee in Orlando and flowed slowly down to South Florida. This was Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's beloved River of Grass. At FIU, we're working very closely with Everglades National Park to try to understand um, the human history of the Everglades, um, a human history that goes back 5,000 years and longer in, in some parts of the Everglades. And we want to understand the diversity of that human history as well as understand how that human history has helped produce the environmental landscape we see today. Over time, huge swaths of Everglades were drained to build cities and farms. The peninsula was carved up with more than 1,700 miles of levees, canals, floodgates, and pumps, making it possible to develop South Florida. The engineering of the Everglades has created new environmental problems, threatening wildlife, flora, and water quality. In 2000, President Bill Clinton signed the historic Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. It seeks to return some of the original flows of water through the land. Most of our faculty realize that they're, they're living in pretty historic times for the Everglades. And we're entering a phase where we're actually breaking apart canals, we're opening up flows, we're changing the way we think about the Everglades. A major initiative of Everglades restoration is elevating the Tamiami Trail so that water can flow back into Everglades Park. FIU scientists are working alongside project engineers to track the effects on the ecosystem. We look at this as a Tamiami Trail project as part of the grand experiment to reconnect the Everglades. And that's where the feedback of information and data to the managers becomes very important. Just a few miles from FIU, another project is underway to rescue a different area of the Everglades. This 82,000-acre reservoir is in trouble. Because no water flows through it, the tree islands are dying. The natural patterns of the land are disappearing. Invasive cattails are crowding out native sawgrass. Engineers are preparing to remove a section of levee and allow water to flow back into the reservoir. Joel Trexler's research team will track the effects of the water flow changes on fisheries and aquatic ecology. This area in particular, uh I would like to see it receiving flow and, uh, and therefore being managed in a way that's more sustainable to retain the, the features of the Everglades ecosystem that I think are kind of emblematic of it. And it's an exciting time right now because there's a lot of things that are going on right now uh, that are really where the rubber hits the road on exactly the nitty gritty of how to do the sort of environmental restoration that we, we all want. Further downstream, FIU scientists conduct numerous research projects at the end of the Everglades pipeline. Florida Bay, Biscayne Bay, and the 10,000 Islands. Changes in water flow and water quality throughout the Everglades system have an impact on marine plants and wildlife. My own research in the Everglades is focused on the ecological role of large predators where the fresh water meets the oceans. It doesn't really matter where you go around the world, large predators are having trouble. Their populations are collapsing. So we want to know how important are things like alligators and sharks in terms of the dynamics of the whole system. We need to know that because as we replumb the Everglades and put more fresh water into, to return it to a more natural state, that could influence these big animals and the important role they play. The growth of South Florida's communities continues to intensify pressure on the natural system. Efforts to replumb the Everglades must contend with the dual demands of nature and development. That's where the research of Ogden and her colleagues becomes essential. Right here what we're looking at is a, um, an area of land that's right outside the boundaries of Everglades National Park. In fact, if we could look 
back past that house that's right behind us, about a half mile beyond that, we would actually be on the border of Everglades National Park. And why we're here and why this is an interesting area for us is that this is an example of what we call ex-urban development, or changes in land, and mainly changes in agricultural land that occur um, in a sort of separate patchy way. So it's not connected to Miami, but just kind of shows up in the middle of nowhere. For FIU researchers, this is an important process to understand in two ways. It's important for us to understand the social consequences of this kind of change, as well as the environmental consequences for this kind of change. There remain many questions about how restoration will affect the ecosystem, from the tiny fish that Joel Trexler studies to large predators that Mike Heithouse researches. There are questions about seagrass beds and tree islands. There are uncertainties about people, too, and what our presence in the ecosystem will mean in the future. As we enter the second decade of Everglades restoration, FIU's broad range of expertise makes it uniquely positioned to answer these scientific questions and lead policymakers towards sustainable solutions.